I was going to actually get back into what was taking place tonight on TV when it comes to SmackDown, but then I opened up my email during the break and got this press release from Dana White. UFC President Dana White announced today. Sorry, I don't want to lie about what it says here in the uh, in the. Uh, the copy, but UFC President Dana White today announced the launch of Power Slap, a sanctioned and regulated combat sport focused on competitive open hand striking. Formed by Dana White, Lorenzo Fertitta, and Craig Pilligan in partnership with the Ultimate Fighting Championship and Endeavor, and produced by Pilgrim Media Group, Power Slap will feature competitors from across the globe competing on the ultimate stage to showcase their power, technique, and resolve. And this is what stood out to me as interesting. The Sport Power Slap will launch with an eight-episode series that will air on TBS in early 2023, where athletes will compete to earn a spot in the cast house, the first Power Slap rankings, and future Power Slap matches in world recognition. For open hand slap fighting, where people just sit there and slap each other with an open hand in the face and pray that they don't have an errant hand go off and shatter their eardrums. But coming to TBS, don't tell me, don't tell me that there's not a little bit of space on the schedule uh, for for AEW in some form, uh, a second show that is. I know Dynamite's fine, but Rampage and All Women Show and ROH Show. Look, if they're going with cheaper programming, which obviously this is, and I'm not trying to shade the concept, although I think it's that's kind of cheap too. But you know, when you have what is essentially going to be somebody else producing it for them. Spending a lot of the costs, you know, I'm sure they're obviously TBS is going to kick out some money for all this sort of stuff. But I mean, you know, it's cheap reality based programming with with slap fighters in a house like it's the ultimate fighter, the ultimate slap fighter. It's, it's coming to be. So, I, yeah. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe we get to see a lead in now for Rampage on Friday nights. I, I'm being dead serious there, you know, <laughs> so to have that at nine o'clock leading into Rampage at 10. I don't know, but that is something. I guess I'm, I, I'm really surprised that it's TBS of, of, and not in ESPN outlet or something like that. But there you go. I figured yeah, that was something made for a Fox Sports or something like that. But this is what the new TBS and TNT and I guess uh, Warner Brothers deal is all looking like now. So there you go. Uh, and before I get to SmackDown on Fox 2, Bandito's contract, uh, some contract, uh, a little bit about it has been revealed by Dave Meltzer uh, in this week's Observer Newsletter. He reported that it's a full-time deal for three years, but has a maximum number of dates on it. And while Meltzer didn't have the exact number of dates, he was told it is more matches than most AEW wrestlers work in a year now. So that shouldn't be an issue, but that could change if they start doing house shows. While Bandito was initially thought to be signing with AEW following his post-Chris Jericho Dynamite match contract offer, he did get an offer from WWE that he was mulling over before doing so. And in that time, he went over to wrestle for Glate. And uh, that match is up on YouTube. It was he and Commander in a match that was absolutely awesome, teaming together in a tag match. That was really, really cool, and that's up for free on Glate's YouTube site over at uh, the Japanese-based company. It does a lot of uh, shoot-style fighting. And the reasons for Bandito choosing AEW, pretty simple. They were family-related. His significant other does not want to move from Mexico, and he's got a child there. And working for WWE, where it's assumed he would begin in NXT, would require him to be based in Florida, and with any other main roster call up like any other main roster call up it's probably going to keep him away from home a lot longer and more than he wanted to be so there you go bandito uh again this is why would somebody sign with aew over wwe some of the real life flexibility that that seem that you seem to get and obviously in wwe you can get to a certain point you can become a randy orton an undertaker somebody like that and ray mysterio with limited dates and things like that but 
as far as they're concerned, Bandito is a unknown commodity, so he's pretty much going to be at their beck and call, uh, unfortunately. So probably the right move made for him going with AEW makes life a lot easier, especially going in and out of Mexico. Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Uh, actually, actually, yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him mean. black and white, Jared. Make him <laughs> so- look as gold and gray as possible. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. <laughs> this is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> well, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin right. Man. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.